Have you ever had a flat tire on your bike? Well, let's try to figure out how we can avoid getting flat tires and how to deal with them when they do occur. Flat tires are the single most debilitating event that can happen to you while you're riding your bike. It's very important that every cyclist knows how to deal with a flat tire when it does occur and how to avoid getting those flat tires. In fact, about 95% of all flat tires that I see are avoidable flat tires. If you can avoid those flat tires, it becomes a relatively rare occurrence. But nevertheless, it's an event that's going to happen. So it's very important that you learn to deal with it. Don't ride your bike any further than you're prepared to walk unless you're equipped to deal with a flat tire. Okay, so flat tires. How do we actually avoid getting flat tires? It's really simple. It's very important that you actually understand how tires work and how tire pressure relates to the function of a tire. Tire pressure is a mechanism that allows the tires to support the weight of the bike and the rider and any impact forces. The tire pressure is related to the width of the tire and its contact surface with the road. The contact surface will be the limiting factor in a bike's ability to support weight. The smaller the contact surface with the road, the greater the pressure required to support the weight of the bike and the rider. Let's take a simple example like this road bike that we have over here. With a road bike, we have relatively skinny tires. Skinny tires require a relatively high air pressure. The reason for that is that a skinny tire has a very small contact surface with the road. Typically, the contact surface with the road on this skinny bike tire is only about one square inch. And with two wheels on this bike, we have the ability to support weight on two square inches. So if we take a bike rider who weighs 170 pounds and a bike that weighs 30 pounds, we have 200 pounds. Except that's just the static weight of the bike and the rider. Imagine standing on a bathroom scale and jumping up and down. Well, something similar to that happens when you're riding your bike. You're exerting forces greater than just the static weight of you and your bike. It's very important that you ride at that maximum tire pressure. Another benefit of riding at that maximum tire pressure, the harder the tires are, the lower the rolling resistance. So it's a lot easier to ride on a tire that's fully inflated. An interesting thing happens from the moment you inflate your tires to the moment you ride on those tires, the pressure declines. And it's not because there's holes in your tires, it's because tires breathe. There are microscopic pores in the inner tubes of your tires. Those microscopic pores allow small amounts of air to leak out over a period of time. The rate of that air loss is very significant in a skinny tire road bike. The reason for that is that in this system, we have a relatively high pressure supported by a relatively low volume of air. So a small amount of air loss in that kind of system will result in a significant loss in air pressure. Very important to make sure that your tires always have the correct air pressure in them. With this system, we have the ability to lose significant pressure in as little as 24 hours. So whether you ride on your bike or whether it sits around, you're going to lose air pressure over that relatively short period of time. It's very important that every time you ride on your road bike that you check the air pressure in your tires. If we take another example of a mountain bike with a fatter tire, we have a much larger contact surface with the road. With that larger contact surface, we can get away with a much lower air pressure. The best way to check the air pressure in your tires is to use a floor pump that has a built-in pressure gauge. That way, 
you can add air as you require to maintain the correct air pressure before you go out for a ride. What happens to the tires when you exceed their load carrying capability? Well, the tire simply collapses under the load. If you exert pressures greater than the pressure in the tire, it simply collapses. When a tire collapses, the soft, delicate rubber inner tube is caught between the hard metal of the rim and the hard surface of the road. The result is something that we call a pinch flat. And a pinch flat is caused when a small pinch of rubber is caught between those hard surfaces. Those types of flats represent about 90% of all flat tires. Those are very avoidable and they are avoidable by making sure that your tires have the correct maximum air pressure in them. The maximum tire pressure marked on a tire is the pressure at which the manufacturer guarantees that the tire will actually stay on the rim. If you exceed that pressure by a significant amount, you're going to run the risk of the tire actually coming off the rim. Some people like to use soft tires as a means of soaking up bumps on the road. It's really not the job of the tire to act as suspension on your bike. You really should rely on your knees and your elbows to provide you with shock absorption when you're riding on a bumpy surface. In fact, most of us instinctively lift our behinds off the seat when we go over a bump. The reason for that is one of comfort. Of course, if you're sitting with all your weight on your saddle, you're going to be terribly uncomfortable. But in addition to comfort, by lifting your behind off the seat and absorbing those impact forces with your knees and your elbows, you're going to reduce the chances of getting a pinch flat. I mentioned that 95% of all flat tires are avoidable. But if you were doing the math, I also said that 90% of all flat tires are caused by pinch flats. So where do those other 5% of flats come from? Well, they come from something that I call the flat that's waiting to happen. And that flat that's waiting to happen is kind of interesting. The process of getting what I would call a legitimate puncture or a legitimate flat tire is a time consuming process. It rarely happens instantaneously. It does occasionally happen instantaneously, but that's very rare. In other words, you ride over a thumbtack, it punctures the tire and pss, the air leaks out. Most of the time, it's a process that takes time. The process starts by riding over a small shard of glass or a little sharp piece of metal. That sharp piece embeds itself in the tread of the tire. It actually takes time for that small shard of glass to work its way through the relatively thick rubber on the tread of your tire, working layer by layer through that thick rubber through to the casing material that forms the structure of your tire and ultimately penetrating into the soft rubber inner tube below. By inspecting your tires regularly before you go out for a ride, you can spot these telltale little cuts in your tires that will contain a shiny little glint of metal or glass. If you simply pick that little glint of glass out of your tire, you've saved yourself from a flat that was waiting to happen.